Good morning. It's so great to gather and worship today. If you have uh, access to the bulletin or the chat window, you can join us in singing or you can listen as you wish. It's great to have technology that allows us to be together in worship. Oh, 
Good morning, everyone. Won't you pray with me? Here we are, Lord. We come together to live and to be your people, to continuously perfect what it means to join in praise, to live in community with one another, and to bring justice into your world. We are in need of your comfort and peace, Lord. Help guide us to recognize our blessings alongside our struggles, that we will see and know the manna that you provide for us every day. Help us live lives that are worthy of your gifts and your grace. Amen. Now, as I extend my hands out to you, won't you extend your hands out to me and to everyone else here on this call? The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. My name is Rachel Haynes. I am the Office Manager and Contextual Education 2 intern, for those of you I've yet to meet for this next year. Uh, this morning, if you couldn't tell, we can all sort of see each other when the moment is right here on this Zoom call. So this could provide for some awkwardness, but it also provides a chance for us to see one another. So I just wanna make sure to point that out. You're more than welcome to turn your camera off whenever you feel is necessary, and you're more than welcome to turn your camera on. Um, some other general announcements for the day. Um, anything that you put in the chat box, you're more than welcome to put prayer requests, updates, thoughts on worship, anything that comes to your mind. It's a live feed and we see it all. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention is that we are starting up our uh, Wired Word class on Wednesday nights targeted for young adults at 730 and it was a really great conversation last week I got to be there and so uh, we really look forward to seeing new faces at that Bible study class on Wednesday night and also after this zoom worship time we will be able to spend some few minutes or um, however long you have after worship to just be together and talk amongst ourselves so with that I want to share today's scripture reading. Good morning, Grace. The reading today comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 16, verses 1 through 5a, verses 9 through 11, verses 13 through 16, verses 27 through 31a, and 35a. The whole congregation of Israelites set out from Elam, and Israel came to the wilderness of Sin on the 15th day of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt. The whole congregation of Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you. And each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, 
when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on the other days. Then Moses said to Aaron, say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaint. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight, you shall eat meat. And in the morning, you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord, your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather as much of it as each of you needs. On the seventh day, some of the people went out to gather and they found none. The Lord said to Moses, how long will you refuse to keep my commandments and instructions? See, the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Therefore, on the sixth day, he gives you food for two days. Each of you stay where you are. So the people rested on the seventh day. The house of Israel called it manna. It was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. The Israelites ate manna 40 years until they came to a habitable land. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. What are you hungry for when you don't know what you're hungry for? It was figured out in a commercial years ago with the primary speaker being Matlock, uh, well, Andy Griffith. He starts out, what are you hungry for? Try Swiss cheese on a crisp Ritz cracker. Put a chunk of ham on a crisp Ritz cracker. Peanut butter and jelly on a crisp Ritz cracker. Onion dip on a crisp Ritz cracker. Mmm, mmm, good. What are you hungry for when you don't know what you're hungry for? Something on a cracker? Mm, not really, except in a superficial way that doesn't stave off real hunger for very long. In these times, we are in the wilderness and we're hungry too hungry for normalcy, for greeting one another, anxious to fully be at work, and still we can't help grumbling a little bit. But we're out here in another wilderness. The pandemic has revealed how wide and wild it is. We see the economic divide we see the remnant of Jim Crow laws in racial injustice in policing and incarceration. We see the very glue of truth and democracy unraveling. If we look back and long for Egypt, well, remember there were enslaved peoples there and there were other people's distorted thinking that trapped them in cruelty and privilege. It makes us simple, uh, sympathetic for the children of Israel, doesn't it? Of course, Moses gets fed up with them, let alone God. But this story is not like a child who's whining for a hot dog instead of Brussels sprouts. This is real fearful hunger, physical hunger and spiritual hunger. Perhaps they are two sides of the same coin. This whole of our life. The Israelites were not wrong to cry out in their need. 
And Moses was not wrong in letting them know that their complaints were not against him, but against God. The instruction God gives is this. Don't hoard it. Don't save it overnight. Trust the Lord to give you enough every day. Later in the story, we find out that some of them did not all obey. Some tried to collect more than others, but it didn't matter. When they got home, they just still had an omer's worth. Some tried to keep it overnight, and then it bred worms. The point is they had to trust God every day to supply their need. And God intended it this way. But think, for 40 years when they came home, nobody had to ask, what's for dinner? It got old. In the book of Numbers that tells another part of this story, we get an even longer account of the people complaining about manna. In Egypt, we used to get fish and cucumbers, melons, onions, leeks, and garlic but now our strength is dried up and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Kind of reminds us of the four walls some of us are having to look at each day. They tried to make it better. They ground it, they boiled it, they made it into cakes. Perhaps this was the original idea of manna helper. No matter, it was still manna. Not less, but just what was needed. That's behind the petition that Jesus gives in the prayer he taught us. Give us this day our daily manna. As the hymn goes, bread of heaven, Feed me till I want no more. When actually we ought to be singing. Bread of heaven, feed me till I get just enough to make it through this day. When the Israelites see it, they said to one another, what is it? God graciously had put food all over the ground for them. But their first response was, what is that? Have you ever been confused about something that eventually became a blessing? Then we know what it means to look at manna and ask, what is it? Probably the worst part of their complaint was that where they had been was starting to look better than where they were. Ah, the good old days. How we long for them when the wilderness seems too dark and too scary, even though at least part of us knows that the good old days were not all that good, and in some cases, they were horrible. Their hunger almost caused them to settle for less, to go back to live as slaves because there at least they could eat. Instead of living in this freedom that is too scary, too wild, and too dangerous. This seems to be the option open to us. Giving in or being uncertain. Not trying a new thing or having to struggle every day. What is it hardly seems adequate, don't you think? Unless it is the right question. What is it that God is doing in our midst in these times? Now that's a question that can keep us moving. We think we are hungry for answers, but maybe we are hungry for the right question. Psalm 105 says, I will praise the Lord. But it goes on to say, what is the Lord doing for us? 
that we can praise. When we are invited to give thanks to the Lord, we know how to do that. We've already praised God in our prayer and in our music. But when the invitation goes on to say, make known God's needs, God's deeds among the people, what is it the Lord is doing? What are we responding? We often stumble. That gets a little harder because we have to remember our dependence upon God. We can go and read the Bible to people all around us. See, we can say, this is what God has done in the past. Aren't you impressed? But what most people who don't know the stories of the Bible they say, but what is God doing now? What is God doing in your life? Right here in this particular part of the wilderness we are in, this is a time of our wandering. God has brought us thus far by faith. But what is it that God is doing now with you in your life, in our nation? What is it, we ask, this unrest, this injustice, this inequality, this longing to belong, this need for family that is beyond birth family. What is it? Jesus said in John 6, in referring to the story from the Exodus about manna, I am the bread of life. Cyprian, a third century bishop in North Africa, appealed to the story of manna as a sacrament of equality. We see in the sacrament, he says, when the manna flowed down from heaven without distinction, either of sex or of age, everyone received equally. Just as the mercy of Christ was equally divided among all, no matter their race or creed or sex. If all God has to offer is manna, some people would rather starve. They leave the church, not for anything necessarily any better, but simply because it isn't giving them the food they need, they think. The tragedy here is that without physical food, we die. But without spiritual food, we also die. If all God has to offer manna, some respond by settling down, planting a garden to hoard and protect. This happens to congregations that forget that the church is not a building but a pilgrim people. Remember, we still sing the song, we're marching to Zion. We're not already there. My husband reminded me about my grandfather's scrawny barn cats. When he had commented to him a long time ago, Papa responded to Ed. I don't keep these cats for pets. I keep these cats to, to catch mice. If I feed them too much, they won't serve their purpose. Church, we are not God's pets. We are God's workers, an army of saints equipped with the sword of the spirit and led by the holy manna God offers through the body and blood of Christ. We may have every reason to complain, 
but we have no good reason to refuse what God gives us in order to serve our purpose for God. God will take care of you. What is it? You tell me. Amen. Good morning, Grace. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we come to you with hearts that need to be open to your word and love. There's so much around us that tears at us and causes us to tremble. Keep us ever mindful of your presence and the hope that you have given us in your son, Jesus Christ. Guide us, we pray, as your church struggling to spread the good news. Keep us focused on the mission and ministry to which you have called us and led us forward. Often we cry because we need that which will sustain us, your manna you send. And we say, what is it? Help us to see the blessing you provide along our way to strengthen us. Hear our prayers for all who need your tender touch of healing in their lives. Those we name before you each day, those who are known only to you, be with those who mourn. May we all remember the love and grace that your faithful people have brought to the world. We thank you for the legacy of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. We pray for all of those who have lost loved ones to violence at the hands of those who are sworn to protect us, as those, as like the family of Breonna Taylor. 
We ask for grace and justice to make its way forward in these days. Especially we remember our sisters, Carol and Judy, our brothers, Richard, Stephen and Steve, and others we call out loud, our name and our hearts in this moment. We pray for all of your creation, always at odds with one another. God, our leaders and those of other nations that this world might be truly as you created to be, a world of peace, hope, and love. These are prayers together with those that lie in the hearts of all your faithful people, which we offer to see you in the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ, who say, not my will, but thine will be done. And who taught us to pray saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. And we thank you for your support of grace and many continue to be faithful during this difficult time. If you wish to donate to the victims of wildfires and hurricanes through UM Corps and or support the work of Grace Church, please go to the website in the chat box and click donate. If you can give your time to help with our missions, we do have a blood drive coming up this Wednesday. And we also have a jazz concert happening on October the 11th. So send us an email or give us a call. And we also want to update you that the deadline for the census has been extended until the end of October. So it is no longer due at the end of this week or on the 30th of this week, but the end of October. We thank you. As we head into the week, let's let the Lord lead us by the hand. Oh 
What a good sentiment. Oh, precious Lord, take our hands. We are in a time of wilderness. And so I invite you to stay on after this worship and join us for a community chat where we can offer manna to each other to sustain us on our journey. For we are people of the way. Go now to serve God and your neighbor in all that you do. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the companionship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace.